Skip Church. Welcome to Basketball Jim Calhoun's Way. This tape is designed to give you a solid foundation in the game of basketball, to give you the basic principles so that you can become the best basketball player that you can be. As you watch the tape, you'll learn how to dribble, how to pass, how to shoot. You'll learn the basic concepts behind playing good, solid defense. You'll learn how to rebound. You'll get tips on how to play good offense. And for rainy days, you'll get some tips so that no matter what the weather, you can still learn about the game of basketball. Jim Calhoun has been coaching basketball for nearly 30 years. His teams have been to the NCAA tournament nine times. And during the last 13 years, his teams have won nine championships. So if you want to learn about the game of basketball, there's no better guy to learn from than Jim Calhoun. And now, here's your chance. Coach? Thanks, Skip. During the next 30 minutes, our tape's going to show you the basic fundamentals of basketball and some sound drills in order to make you the best player you possibly become. But remember, the responsibility is going to be on you to take these drills, take these fundamentals into your schoolyard, into your playground, so you too can become a true champion and be the best you can be. <laughs> Let's start with dribbling. It's the only way you can get from one place to another and still have the ball. Before we even put the ball on the floor to start our dribbling, we must get ourselves in a ready position. Now in all basketball activities, movement, be it shooting, passing, dribbling, we have to get ourselves knees flexed and ready. By ready, we're ready to explode. Defense, offense, regardless of what we do. To start dribbling, ready position is the first aspect we want to cover. To get in the ready position, we want to make sure our feet are shoulder width apart to create good balance. Secondly, we want to make sure that our knees are flexed so we're ready to spring off in any activity to decide which way we want to go. Third, we want to make sure our head is up so that we can either drive, pass, or dribble. Now here are the basic elements to become a good dribbler. First, we want to make sure we're in that ready position. Secondly, keep our elbow tight so the ball stays close to our body so we have full control. Third, remember, dribbling is an activity where we use our fingertips and wrist. And fourth, remember to keep that head up so you can pass, dribble, or see an open teammate. Now that we know the basic elements of dribbling, let's take a look at two kinds of dribbles that first are going to help us change speed and then change direction. Let's take a look at the hesitation dribble first. What we're trying to accomplish here is to get the defense to hesitate or actually slow down. How we accomplish this is by coming at the defense and starting to slow the pace of our dribble. And it as we get ourselves in a ready position, ready to explode by the defender, we take one soft dribble, and on the next dribble, explode by him all the way to the basket. Now that we know how to change speed of our dribble with the hesitation, let's show how we change direction of our dribble using something called a crossover dribble. The crossover dribble is nothing more than a pass to ourselves. What we do simply is move the hand to the side of the basketball and push it from one side of our body to the other. So if you want to become a great dribbler, you've got to become one with the ball. The best ball handler I've ever been associated with was Chris Smith. Chris had the basketball down the cellar, through the house, on the garage, up the stairs, and in essence, dribbled the basketball all day long. If he went to the store, 
back and forth. Every single place he went, Chris Smith was with the basketball. And if you want to become a great dribbler, you've got to do what Chris did. Take the basketball everywhere you go. Through the house, watch it mom, <laughs> through the driveway, up the stairs, through the gravel, on the sidewalk, everywhere you go, have that basketball in your hand. You in turn will feel the comfort level all great dribblers feel. Now here's another tip, try dribble sit-ups. Simply done as you do any normal sit-up, except for the fact you're dribbling a basketball all the way around your body, side to side, matching it with the motion of your sit-up. Not only will you become a great dribbler, but you'll also develop a heck of a body this way. Now here's a recap of dribbling. Always be in the ready position while you're dribbling. Ready to pass, ready to shoot. The crossover dribble is passing the ball from one hand to another. It's designed to allow you to change direction. To change speed, use the hesitation dribble. That way you can take advantage of the defense. Next, passing. It's the only way to get the ball to your teammate. The first thing we have to do to make good pass is get ourselves in a ready position. Now you're going to hear me time and time again throughout this tape get ourselves in a ready position so we can make good solid basketball moves. Secondly, what is a good pass? A good pass is thrown to the receiver so they catch the ball in a positive position so they in turn can drive, shoot, or pass themselves. The first pass we want to talk about is a simple chest pass. Three basic components. First, we want to step to the target so we have an accurate pass. Secondly, we want to keep our elbows out so that we can throw the pass with enough velocity. And third, make sure we finish with our hands out so the ball doesn't have too much spin on it. The next pass we want to take a look at is the bounce pass. Now this is the same as the chest pass, only it's designed to go under the defense. Remember, we're going to step towards the target, elbows out, and finish with our hands in an outward position. The difference between the bounce pass and the chest pass is that you're going to hit the floor about halfway between you and the receiver. Secondly, hit that receiver about waist high. The third pass we ought to learn is the baseball pass. The major difference here is that we're stepping with the foot opposite our throwing hand. We want to make sure though, once again, we finish with our hand out. Make sure you have a good follow through and make sure that hand is pointing outward. Once you've mastered how to throw the baseball pass with your strong hand, don't be afraid to try it with your weak hand. This will make you a much better basketball player. Now if you really want to become a good passer, here's something you can do at home. Go out to your garage, find a cement wall, and draw a target. Here we're going to practice the bounce pass, the chest pass, the baseball pass, even the weak handed pass. Keep trying to hit the target. Remember to keep the same basic fundamentals. And please, don't do it near any windows, and don't hit your little brother. Now here's a recap of passing. Always be in the ready position, stepping forward, Pass the ball from your chest, finishing with your hands pointing outward. When you bounce pass, it's the same motion as the chest pass. Big difference is that you're bouncing it on the floor halfway between you and the teammate you're passing to. In the baseball pass, you step with the foot opposite the hand you're using to throw the ball. And when you've accomplished that with the hand that you're used to throwing with, Change over and use your other hand. Now, shooting. If you can't shoot, you can't score. And if you can't score, you can't win. I know everybody likes to win, and I'm positive everybody likes to score. But in order to become a good shooter, you've got to learn the basic fundamentals while you're young so that you may become a great shooter when you get older. Like everything else we've done, we start in the ready position. Now that we're in a ready position, we want to pivot our shooting foot towards the basket three or four inches in front of our other foot. The next key to a good shot is keeping our knees bent so we get good balance and good power. The next element is to make sure our shoulders are square and our head is up. Next, have your arm under the ball and your elbow facing the hoop. Next, pick out your target. Remember, your target should be the inside of the opposite side of the rim. Remember, a good shot starts in your toes, goes all the way through your body, and ends up in your fingertips. Don't watch the ball and keep your eyes on the target all the way through the shot and keep your head as still as you can. Lastly, make sure your hand is waving goodbye to the basketball. Remember, a good shot is one using the basic fundamentals we just taught you. 
shooting in a good rhythm, a shot in which you're open, and lastly, a shot you've practiced so much, you know you can make it. Now let's look at the foul shot. This is the only shot in all of basketball where you won't be defended. Therefore, you should be able to develop a great pre-shot routine, same kind of rhythm, same kind of routine, time after time. As long as you use the basic fundamentals we just went over, you too can become a great foul shooter. Now the layup. This is one of the easiest shots in basketball, yet it's one of the ones missed most often. In order to make a layup, first we need a good angle to the basket. Secondly, go off the foot opposite your shooting hands. Make sure you high jump, don't long jump. And third, lay it off the glass. Don't try to go over the rim. Remember the backboard's there for a reason. If you want to become a great shooter, you got to first realize that shooting is not just an arm motion. It's a toes to fingertip action, your total body involved. Danielle Marshall might be the best example of a person who shot always toes to fingertips. Now here's a couple tips you might try at home. First, try sitting under the basket in your driveway in a sitting down position and shooting at the basket. Get your elbow under the ball and really work hard on shooting the ball in a sitting down position. This will greatly help you keep your eyes on the target, head up, shoulders square, elbow under the ball, and a good goodbye to the basketball release. Now that we've worked on the upper half of our body, we want to start working with our legs and how they get involved in shooting. Do a one-handed shot with the opposite hand behind your back, and as you slowly move from the basket, you'll find you'll have to get your legs more and more involved. Stay in balance and keep moving slowly away from the basket. Keep the same components involved and make sure you wave goodbye to the basketball. Now here's a recap of shooting. Begin in the ready position, ready to receive the ball. Once you have it, pivot toward the basket with your shooting foot forward. Get under the ball, square your shoulders with your knees bent. Look at the target, which should be the inside of the opposite side of the rim. Keep your eyes on the target until the ball goes in. Remember, your shot is from your toes all the way up to your fingertips, and those fingertips should be waving at the basket when your shot is complete. Now, defense. I think you know how important defense is here at UConn, and it's the only aspect in the game that you can do the same every night. Your passes can be off, certainly your shooting can be, but defense can be played the same every night. So it's up to you to become a good defensive player. Let's get ourselves in a ready position, ready to play defense. Remember, no coach is ever gonna yell at you for being real aggressive on defense. First part of aggressiveness is to pressure the ball, make the ball do something, make the man dribble, pass, or shoot. Secondly, let's force the basketball. Here we're trying to make the ball go where we want it to go. Here's the most common example of forcing the basketball. If the person you're guarding dribbles predominantly with his right hand, we want to overplay the right hand, force him to go to the left. This will be his weak hand. And now that we've forced the ball, we want to contain the basketball, making sure that we do not allow the ball to get between us and the basket. And now that we've learned how to play defense on the ball by pressure, force, contain, we have to realize we have responsibility for the ball even though our person has got rid of it. That's called the V principle. Now remember, once the, a man has got rid of the ball, we still have the basic responsibility for the basketball. We can now get in something called a V, or ball you man position. The farther the ball gets away, the farther we can get away from our own man. But at all times, seeing ball, you man, a simple V. This allows us to help a teammate to protect the basket, yet recover in order to play our own man. In reality, the best way to become a good defender is just have the desire to stop the other person. But here's a little drill you can do at home to become even a better defender. I like to call this one shadow tag. Now this is a fun game in which you can really work on good defensive principles. You get yourself in a good ready position and then try to tag your opponent with your opposite hand on the opposite side of his chest. You'll find the movements you make here are the exact same movements you're going to make when you're playing defense. This can make you a heck of a defender. Now here's a recap of defense. Begin in the ready position and play aggressive defense, pressuring the ball. 
Now, force the ball to where you want it to go. Next, contain the ball. And then, even when the ball goes from your man to another, your responsibilities for the ball aren't through. You have to keep a V between your man and the ball so that you can see both and help out when you need to. Now, getting the ball off the boards. Rebounding, an important aspect of basketball. It's the way in which you get the ball from the defensive end to the offensive end. You won't get it back unless you can really rebound. A classic example of a great rebounder here at UConn certainly was Rod Sellers. Rod Sellers certainly knew the fundamentals, but most importantly, he had a great desire to go after the ball. That allowed him to become the sixth all-time leading rebounder in Big East history. In rebounding, the first element, once the ball is shot, is to find your man. Secondly, after you've found your man, make sure you box out, get between him and the basket. Third, make sure you control him by using your elbows and keep your feet active. Fourth, find the basketball and then go secure it. Make sure you do it in a good firm position, ready to make that good outlet pass. Now that we've got the ball secured, pivot to the outside and throw that good outlet pass to start the fast break. The most helpful hint we can give you here in rebounding is rather simple. Remember the five basic components of rebounding, but most importantly, every game in which you play, go after the basketball. The, all the great rebounders have one thing in common. They want the ball more than anyone else. Remember, every pickup game, every game in which you play, you must want the ball worse than anyone else. Now here's a recap of rebounding. Once someone on the other team has shot the ball, you must find your man, then pivot to box out, controlling him with use of your elbows. Then find the ball, secure it, and make the outlet pass. Now that you've got the ball, you're on offense. So what are you going to do with it? In looking at offense, probably the first thing we've got to study is going close to the basket. Whether you're a big man, small man, young or old, every single player has developed an inside game. Probably the most misunderstood aspect is that everybody is only one post player. All five people are post players and everybody should score close to the basket. We have four basic principles in which we feel you can become unstoppable in the post if you learn the basic four moves in the post. Let me go over the first move. First move simply is having the basketball without using your dribble and be, catch a defender on the low side. As soon as this happens, we're going to use something called a hook step. We get down in the ready position, we receive the ball on the pass, and simply, with the defender here, hook over the top of his leg to and through up to the basket, laying the ball up. This makes it very difficult to stop. Secondly, we find the defender on the top side. When this happens, we now use something called a drop step. Once again, dropping to the basket, sealing off the defender, and going up to and through the basket, laying the ball up. The third way in which a defender can play us is by straight behind. When he does this, feeling no pressure on the top side or the bottom side, we simply turn and square. Shoot our jump shot. If they come at us, we use that good fake and go to the basket all the way. And then the fourth way, someone's going to come out in front of us. When the front occurs, we simply make a move of reversing and sealing the defensive player, much like a box out, and asking for the ball. As the ball is thrown over in the lob method, method, I catch it in my hand, complete the play, and then turn and lay the ball up. With this, I now have a good inside post game. Man playing on the top, drop step. Man playing on the bottom side, hook step. Man playing behind, turn and square, and reverse and seal when the man plays in front. This will make you an unstoppable player in the, in the post. Now that we've taken a look at the inside game, let's look at a good outside game. First, in order to play outside, you've got to be able to shoot off a dribble. Shooting off the dribble is a simple move, but one that must be practiced constantly. Remember, the last dribble you make is nothing more than a shot pass to yourself as your feet get ready in the shooting position. Now that we've learned how to shoot off a dribble, let's learn how to shoot off a pass. The single most important part of shooting off a pass is to make sure that we pivot towards the basket and keep the same basic shooting components we've already learned on this tape. The third outside move we want to look at is the fake 
and step by. This is all set up by a great fake. Every great basketball player learns how to fake at an early age. And how we do this is get ourselves in a ready position. And remember, a fake is nothing more than that. It's to freeze or move the defense by moving the ball, not our body. Our body is in the position that once we fake and the defense goes for it, we go by them from our ready position. Now let's take a close look at the fake and step by. Make sure once we fake and go by the defense, we cut the defender off, shoot the ball when we're open, and take a good shot. Now that we've learned the fake and step by, let's add a little excitement. Once we fake and step by, instead of pulling up for the jump shot, let's take it all the way to the hole. Now we've just learned some good individual moves inside and certainly some good individual moves outside. But now we take our individual game and utilize it with a teammate. The first thing you can do is set a good solid screen. First, the person setting the screen should come up behind the defensive player about one step away. Secondly, create a good angle so his teammate can rub his man off the screen. And third, keep a good solid base position so he can hold a strong screen. Now the offensive player, with or without the ball, coming off the screen, must first take his man down and create a good solid angle so that he comes off tight to the screen. Secondly, take him shoulder to shoulder so there's no room for him to get through. And third, make sure that you make an explosion step off the screener. Now here's a recap of offense. First, the inside game. If a defender plays you on the low side, use a move called a hook step, stepping over the top of his leg, then go to the basket. If the defender plays you on the top side, use a drop step to become free to go to the basket. If the defender plays behind you, turn and square to the basket to shoot a jump shot or drive. If the defender plays in front of you, reverse and seal, then ask for the basketball. To develop a good outside game, practice shooting off the dribble, the final dribble putting you in position to shoot with proper form. Next, practice shooting off the pass, no dribbling. Simply take the pass, pivot to the basket, and shoot a good jumper. Developing a good fake using only the ball is essential. Then you can step by the defender for a quick jump shot. The fake also freezes the defender so you can drive all the way to the basket for a layup. In team play, setting a screen becomes very important. An offensive player setting the screen comes up behind the defensive player defending a teammate. The screen is set about one step away from the defender, using a strong base ready for contact. The offensive player using the screen, either with or without the ball, must come very close to the screen so his defender can't come around. That leaves the offensive player free to score. No basketball, it's raining. Not so fast. This rainy day doesn't have to be a basketball waste. There's plenty of things you can do around the house to make yourself a better player. Here's a couple things you might have some fun with. Take a tennis ball, a waste paper basket, and continue to shoot at it. Develop good hand-eye coordination, great for depth perception, awful a lot of fun. You play some games with this too, by the way. Well, here's an easy way in which you can develop jumping by doing this every single day. Get a two by four, a book, and every single night, do toe raises. This will give you explosive jumping power. Here's a good one. By lying in bed and shooting the basketball, you can develop good basketball control and really work on hard on that basketball stroke. You shoot the ball up and make sure it comes back in the same spot. By doing so, you're developing real good shooting action. Here's a Chris Smith favorite. Go down to your basement and dribble a basketball. To make it even more challenging, dribble up and down the steps. Do me a favor, make sure you stay out of the living room with this one though. For the past 30 minutes during this tape, we've tried to give you some sound basketball fundamentals. Fundamentals you can have with you your entire basketball life. It's important you use them when you're young, but it's more important you take these fundamentals and develop yourself into a complete basketball player. Now that we've shown you the fundamentals, the onus now switches back to you. This tape is nothing more than a roadmap, something simple that can take you to great destinations. But those destinations are 100% your responsibility. It's up to you to practice the rainy day trips, screening on the ball, the jump shots. Those are your responsibility. I hope to see you on the court someday. You too can be a champion. You too can be a great basketball player, but it's up to you. Now that you've watched the entire tape, don't set it aside and let it gather dust. 
Here are some tips on how to use this tape over and over and over again so that you can become the best basketball player possible. If you're alone, watch the teaching of the individual skills on this tape. Skills like dribbling or shooting. Then go out to your own hoop and practice them. Now if you're going to get together with friends in the neighborhood and play a game, watch the portions of this tape that deal with the teaching of skills involving other people. Skills like how to play good solid defense or how to play offense. Then take those skills out to the court and try them on your friends. If you watch this tape, understand the skills that are on it and then practice them over and over and over again, pretty soon you'll be playing basketball Jim Calhoun's way. IGA has presented Basketball Jim Calhoun's Way, a short course in the basics of basketball to help make you the best basketball player you can be. Good workout, guys. Yeah, coach.